Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Welcome to be my guest today. We have a blast from the past. Dr. Oliver Akamnanu is back with us, and you were with us back when we were, gosh, about three years ago before we came into our new studio. All of, he, all of, you were a, an anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. and then he decided to stop and become a writer. Now that's quite, that's quite a change. After that three years. <laughs> after how many years? Three zero, 30 years. 30 years, after 30 years. Yeah, I practiced for 30 years. And, and then, then you decide, that was it, I'm going to write. <laughs> what was your first book? I forgot, what was it? What was it uh, so Pass of Many Dishes. Okay, so and the second book? Many dishes. Then part two of So Pass of Many Dishes. Yeah. Then after that, I did a book on, um, on growing up, yeah. growing up in Africa. Yeah. Thereafter, I did a book on uh, um, going to school. Actually, it was a kind of a series. Yeah. Then I veered off into poetry. Poetry? Yeah. I didn't know you were into poetry. Yeah. Poetry. Wh when did this happen? I did a book. Uh, actually, uh, my only award-winning book, Rap to Mass, is a poetry book. Did I see that? Yeah. I rap, rap to Mass. It won the World uh, Poetry Prize Award. I think in uh, 2000 and... Uh, 2000 so and you won uh, in a poetry book. Now, yeah. that, then this one was next, right? No, no, no. Nope. This is actually my, my 20th book. 20th? 20, two zero. yep. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I've done quite, quite a bit. You've been a busy things. boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got you getting out a lot talking about your books and book signings. Are you getting? Yeah, out? yeah, we're doing we're doing that um, mainly in uh, now mainly in uh, Massachusetts, but initially it was more in New York. In the more in New, New York. York. Mm -hmm. Now you're in South Hadley, right? Yeah. I was kidding, telling him that geez, I'm from Wilbraham. I know that area very well. I know how you climb up the Mass Pike, you get off in Grafton, and you come over that way. This is his latest, the latest book. Am I correct? Yeah. Little baby Lydia. Grandpa, Grandma, and Student Mom, Family Role Reversal, and the New Times. And this is, who is the lady on the front cover? Well, it's a, it's a hand image of the grandmother of little baby Lydia. Of the little baby Lydia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, for those people who, without giving away the ending, tell us about the story. Yeah, uh, little baby Lydia is, is actually based on uh, a true life event. Uh, I won't go into the details, but it's a yeah. no, <laughs> the true life event uh, of a, a, a young mother, or oh, well, a young medical student yeah. uh, who was engaged, then got pregnant, and then was thrown torn between having to uh, deciding whether to have her baby uh, and drop maybe one year or lose six months of uh, higher education to care for the baby or not having the baby and graduating on schedule right. with the rest of her classmates. Uh, eventually she discussed with the, her, her parents mm -hmm. and they urged her to have her baby. Yeah, the, yeah. The, grandma the, grandma the, stepped in. Yes, yeah. So um, the baby having urged, uh, or rather the, the parents of the, of the lady, young lady having urged her to have the baby had to step up. Yeah, this is happening a lot. Grandparents yes. raising their children. Yes. I love this part where they had to step up to the 21st century, disposable diapers. Probably when they were yes. raising her, no. No, they, by the time they were, they were uh, those grandparents were raising their own children, one of who had a uh, little baby Lydia, uh, the disposable diapers were not yet in vogue. They were using um, um, Cloth diapers. Cloth diapers. Oh. And, and the sign of having a baby then was having uh, diapers washed and spread out on railings yeah. in front of the house. I hate to admit <laughs> it, but my my mom preferred di uh, washable diapers. Yeah. And uh, that poor lady, I mean, oh, I don't know why. She, I guess she thought that my little tushy would be happier that way, but she could have used, I think, um, <clears throat> the other kind, which I definitely got for my son. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> what gave you the idea of writing Little Baby Lydia? Uh, uh, like I said, it's based on a true life story, which I happen to have participated in. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we felt it was necessary to 
uh, we realized that actually a lot of people uh, had that kind of a problem okay. where yeah. um, a young lady in school or in college yeah. will be uh, torn between uh, going on with a uh, with a pregnancy or getting rid of the pregnancy yeah. to graduate on schedule. Exactly. And uh, indeed, and uh, we felt having uh, participated in in that kind of experience, we felt it was necessary to let our experience be shared by others. Yeah. And uh, especially Definitely. since we realized that it was a fairly common problem. Definitely, there are people in their seventies, <clears throat> heading towards eighties their 60s, 50s, late 40s, uh, who are raising their grandchildren. They didn't even ever in a million years think it would happen. Yeah. I can see it. I mean, I, I can see it, definitely. I'm not, I wouldn't hesitate. If, if this was the situation, of course, I don't send the child to foster care. I'll take the baby. That's okay. You know, it, it's fine. It, it, I think it's, it's a great idea. I just... It, that's a drawing. To me, it's almost... A drawing that yeah. on the cover built from a photographer, a picture of a real lady. Yeah, actually, I sketched it and you then sketched I it. I sketched it and then um, uh, sent it to my artist in New York. Uh, oh. Yeah, and she does quite quite some good job. So you sent it to your artist. Yeah. So do you get you get the word out more in New York? Why not more out this way in New England, where you are? Uh, we happen to have a larger audience in the New York. Well, we lived in New York for quite some time. Yeah before we relocated to Massachusetts and uh, yeah. uh, we have more friends and my artist uh, Isaac Toro who we acknowledge at the back of the book yeah. also happens to live in New York okay. and uh, the, the libraries and uh, some of the institutions that we displayed our sure. previous books still know us and uh, whenever we do a new book yeah. we try to get in touch with them. And well uh, let me tell you because uh, my god I mean with the big cities we've got Worcester right up the street yeah. Huge Worcester Library, perfect. Um, we have so many cultures in Worcester. If you go to UMass Medical Center, the uh, the huge hospital yes. there, they have translators there for I swear every language in the book. They have to. They have doctors from all over the world. Great culture in Worcester, Boston, um, Springfield. That's even yes. a you know a yeah, city too. So I, it'd be great if you could get the word out more here in New England. Come out yeah, this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, uh, we are in touch with uh, uh, the city library in uh, Springfield. Good. We've done. We've read virtually all our previous books there, yeah. and we have a date to read this uh, this particular book. Yeah, I, I. There's so many places that you can go. Uh, Little baby Lydia, um, libraries. Not only the libraries, you know, even senior centers, because don't forget, some of the seniors are raising their grandchildren. True. And everybody, I think, just about every relate every age group to say 45 and above can relate to this. I mean, some people do have a grandchild as early as 40, but um, it, that's why I love this. It relates to not, I think, not only all cultures, but the different ages. The that's different true. E without, I, wanna sh I don't want to tell the, the ending, but how did Lydia turn out? Can you give us an idea? Yes, uh, uh, as uh, narrated in details in the book, Initially, it wasn't easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy for the grandparents, having forgotten um, all about raising children. In fact, they are, as in the book, their last, their last baby uh, was in her mid twenties. Yeah. So, having had that experience last more than twenty years previously, it wasn't easy initially. Yeah. Uh, with the baby looking so small and so fragile. Uh, having to wake up at night, having to uh, do the changing and then rock the baby, not knowing whether the baby was crying for out of hunger or out of wetness. Not to mention you're losing yeah. a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but eventually, well, it was it was all fun for the grandparents. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like starting all over for them. That's true. And, and then you mentioned the lack of child the um, of uh, child care facilities. Now, was it Unavailability. Of course, we have tons of them around here. Yeah, in in, in Boston, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy um, from the time uh, at the time the baby was born, mm -hmm. or where the the grandparents didn't realize that they needed to search searching early enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they waited a little too late. By the time the baby was born, uh, getting a place immediately 
wasn't easy. No. Uh, maybe that out of uh, poor planning, yeah. they they didn't arrange, arrange in time. But the baby, the time the baby came came on, uh, they were being given three months, four months, five months yeah. to, to wait. Yeah. And that's uh, all they had to prepare. Eventually, they got one, but it was a very poor experience. It was, yeah. you know, as detailed in the book, they visited the place and they had to withdraw. They didn't even, as a matter of fact, they didn't. They visited the place and couldn't, yeah. and couldn't fathom their grandchild getting into that kind of a, yeah. a horrible situation. So yeah. they now had to take take turns, you know, from their jobs. Yeah. Uh, and they were working too. Yeah. Well, the the uh, the grandpa, the grandpa was self-employed. Grandma was uh, in uh, em employment. Yeah. So they had to work out a system whereby the grandpa had rest at the weekend the, then uh, the switched grandma off. yes yeah. they switched off exactly that's sometimes oliver how can people get your book uh, the book is available uh, uh, through um, amazon by the chance um, of course by amazon through uh, through us directly if people want um, how can they reach you directly uh, they can either uh, Email us, o -O -A -K -A -M -S, at yahoo.com. Let me say it for you. Um, I don't have it with me. Uh, let me see. That's, uh, do you have your card with you? Let me... Um, yeah, we, we do. Let's see. It's Did great. You, you can uh, you can read it. And you can also it, you can get it right yeah, here. Yeah, they can get it uh, by, on Amazon. Library. A lot of libraries library already have, have the book. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, we are donating a copy to the, mm -hmm. to the library in, in Upton. Yeah, that's uh, right. You're going to Upton, you're going to be able to Yeah, sit. after this uh, you got to get you out of New York and out this way. My gosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. We, we do, we do, uh, uh, we do quite a few readings. That's, that's the card. All right. So in order to reach him, all right, here is his email. O-O-A-K-A-M-S at yahoo.com. Again, O-O-A-K-A-M-S at yahoo.com. And this is Dr. Oliver Akamnanu. He's a physician and author. He super, I cannot believe how well, many. Super, so many dishes. Actually, we we took the card there contains uh, the first, very, our first, very yeah. first book that was about uh, in yeah. 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. And then the Pagans Made Us, which was yeah. our 19th book. What, okay, Oliver, what made you decide to leave anesthesiology and become an author? I, as a matter of fact, by the time I, I finished medical school... 30 years you were in that? Yes. By the time I finished medical school, I gave myself 25 years to practice medicine. Yeah. I wanted to practice medicine for 25 years. Yeah. I ended up practicing for 30 years. 30 years? Yes. Yeah. And uh, by the time I was about to clock 30 years, my my first son was already a doctor. My second son was already a doctor. You're all son or doctors? Well, yes, all, 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 all four of them. And then your, and your daughter is a dentist, yes. like mom. Yes. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, when we immigrated into the United States some 13 years ago, yeah. I was required to start going to uh, do uh, residency again. By then, my, my two sons were already... Yeah, they were already <laughs> in peace. So dad was behind. So I was to go and be probably. How many years there. did you have to do your residency? Was it three? Depending upon the specialty, three years or four where were you years. In Boston, where were you for your residency uh, in New York? Uh, no, no, that was we first came. We we first came to Los Angeles. Yeah. We stayed in Los Angeles for two years, yeah. three years. My wife had to uh, go uh, go back and do um, some retraining for dentists, yeah. foreign trained dentists mm -hmm. coming into the United States. So it's not that easy. If you even if you're a doctor from another country, you're gonna have to go by the rules, right? Yeah. For uh, for MDs, you didn't have to go back to school, but you needed to do residency. Sure. But for dentists, they needed to go back to school to do what they call the oh. advanced standing program for international dentists. How long did she have to go? Two to back? three years, depending upon. So it was the about university. the same for both of you, right? Uh, yes. But in her own, in their own case, they had to go back physically to school to start reading. But you didn't. But in, for me, for medical uh, for you medical doctors, you didn't have to go back to school. But you need to do residency, the kind of retraining, yeah. or, or training in the arts of the profession. Did you which find the way we do it in the United <laughs> States? Anesthesiology was it easier or more intense than where you were trained? Uh, for a resident, it was more intense. Here, yes, I'm not surprised. Yes, yeah. for for the resident, because I I know that I, I realized that my son my sons sometimes had to do 48 hours at a stretch. 
you know. Yes, they don't let you sleep. Yes, <laughs> you know, especially when you were a junior resident, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't easy. It no, wasn't, uh, it's not. No, yes. and the med students, it's so cute. You know, over at University of Massachusetts, you know, you go to your doctor's appointment, and it's kind of fun because sometimes they'll bring in a med student who has to do their rounds. Yes. And they'll I'll say, gee, what are you gonna what what do you think you're gonna specialize in? Well, I don't know yet. But usually you'll see a resident first, then he takes it to the attending. And it's really great. I think the more the merrier. I like to have more people hear it because the more people who hear it, maybe they got a different slant on what they just heard. That's okay with me. That's true. That's okay. Do you miss it? Uh, once in a while, once in a long while, I miss it. But I take solace in the fact that uh, uh, while, I, while I practiced that. I had all the fun, yeah, and you know, and uh, but once in a while, when I discuss with my with my children, yeah, you know, uh, I feel like having that experience again. But for but it's only for a very short while. Yeah. when I pick up any of my books <laughs> again. So this, okay, there's twenty books. Yeah, that's the twenty. This, right, this is the twentieth one. Dare I ask if there's another coming? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, yes, actually, I have. Of course. But not you know, at a slower pace. I, I don't intend to do the writing longer than another three to four years. You take a break. Yes. Do you have an idea what it's going to be about? Uh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, your books are so different. They're so cool. You never know what you're coming up with. A lot of times when, well, you have an idea where you're going, but you don't, you have an idea how it will end. Yeah. But, but you gotta in, get there. Yeah, yeah, in between. Yeah, that is where the problem is. You have to. Yeah. You have to build up. You have to, especially if you're, uh, if you're writing pure fiction. Some of my books are actually pure fiction. Mm -hmm. Some others are life experiences, kind of memoirs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one is a, a poetry book, and then um, one is a, a book on on a civil war. I, I, I came originally from Nigeria. The civil war? And we had the civil war in Nigeria. Oh, okay. I thought, okay, Nigeria. Not, not the American Nigeria, civil yeah. war. No, okay. I, read, I read about that in the yeah. history, history books. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So the one over in Nigeria. Now, this yeah. is where you were born. Yes, I was in born, Nigeria. In, Nigeria. born in Nigeria, raised in Nigeria, and then uh, had the Nigerian experience and a little bit of the uh, European experience. Nigeria was colonized by the British for... Yeah. Is that where you first went to medical school? Yes. In Nigeria? Yes. How long did you have to go through that? Six years. And that made you a doctor? Six years? Yes. That, the British system is six years. Six after, years. Yeah, after, after high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Starting in high school? After high school, you do six years in, by the British system. But by the American system, after high school... College. College four for years. four years. Then and you then do for medical school another four years. Yeah. Yeah, but in the British system, you do six years straight. That's it. Then you do uh, residency, that's housemanship, yeah. uh, for one year. Yeah. Uh, then you can now. So it's uh, longer here. Practice, yes. Eight, three, it's more like 11 years here, isn't it? Uh, eight yeah. plus. Well, um, residency, there are some residencies. That's uh, three years, isn't it? Yeah, three, uh, three years. So if you take four, four, that's eight and three, that's a long. Depending year. upon the specialty. Like one of my sons did five years yeah. because he, he specialized in orthopedics and then. A spine, orthopedics and spine. Okay. Uh, yeah. So he took a total of five years before he became an orthopedic and spine surgeon. So they wanted to follow you and your wife in the medical field. Yeah. Well, because all the children yeah, do. That's kind of, of unusual. Yeah. That's all of it. Is that is that not unusual in Nigeria that children follow them? <laughs> I realize that um, mo most of my classmates in the medical school, yeah. one or more family members of theirs ultimately end up as medical In Nigeria? Doctors. My classmates in Nigeria, in Nigeria, yes. But here, I bet in America, you felt like maybe one stood out, right, in their home, their family. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually, I think, the way it goes from what I've seen. One, and maybe another one's a salesman, another one's an artist. Yeah, you never know. Maybe. <laughs> but you see, uh, over there, a lot of factors come into play. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that all symbol, symbolism. You like, you like to follow the, the path of your of your parents. Really? That's yeah. strong there. A lot, yeah. It's, it's, but I, I noticed that here a lot of times, uh, like you said, a lot of children of physicians mm -hmm. don't go into medicine. A lot of them go either into music or some, something lighter, yeah. maybe because of the experience that they, they yeah. have. But yeah. over there, 
a lot of children of physicians, of medical doctors Going and to the dentists other hills. follow the same pathway. When did you come over here to the States? We came in uh, 2005. Yeah. Was it hard? And then was it or was it easy? Uh, it wasn't very difficult. Uh, well, you were a doctor. For, for people who didn't have uh, the professions, who yeah. uh, it's usually a, a lot more difficult. Yeah. We applied for the green card. We got the green. Then after five years, we became U.S. citizens. Yeah. Then uh, you practiced in New York. Uh, my my new profession. No. Oh, so you when you came here. When we came, like I said, when we came. Oh, so you when we came, I went straight into writing after. After oh. I decided not to go to do the residency, oh, because okay, I was I required did. to go, and I was already a, a, yeah. a chief consultant, what we call chief consultant. Yeah. I was already kind of mm. uh, helping to train yeah. younger doctors. Yeah. Uh, but coming on, I was required to start taking exams, uh, being a resident, sleeping in the hospital. That would have been a long, <laughs> long haul. I, I'm, oh my gosh, I can see why. <laughs> But to, <laughs> you did you know early on, even when you were practicing as a doctor, that you wanted to write? Did you know? Oh yeah, you knew. In fact, I, I the first two books I, I did, I did, I did the manuscripts as a medical student, and I decided, like I said, that I would practice medicine for twenty five years. But that was the day we were swearing the Hippocratic oath. That's yes. the kind of the oath medical doctor. First, do take. no harm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I made up my mind that I'll practice for 25 years. She yeah. was still, my wife was still in the medical <laughs> school, was still in school. In, 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 She'd in been dentistry. through a lot too, to both of you. That's stressful. It's yeah. stressful. Well. But, you know, you're coming to a new country <clears throat> and you've decided to change your profession. You're jumping from one to the next and you're hoping, I hope this works. And it did. And your wife practices now dentistry. Yeah, she still practices. Hopefully for a, a couple of more years. Oh yeah. And then we'll probably become full time <laughs> babysitters. Are you serious? You're too, too young. To, she's too young to retire. Are you crazy? No, 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 no. So you have how many grandchildren now? Uh, for our first, our first son has a, a, a child. Our second son has two children, and our our, 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 our last, uh, well, our only daughter has. One baby. She has one. The last time I saw her, and this on her little baby Lydia. To tell you now, little baby Lydia is actually based on the 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 daughter of our own daughter. On your daughter. Yes. And I met their daughter. I remember coming in here, and she took pictures in her oh, room, yes, in the yeah, old studio. True. Okay, that's we have been talking with Oliver Akinamdo, <clears throat> and he is a, a doctor. He is also an author of twenty books. <clears throat> His latest is Little Baby Lydia, and it boy it, it appeals to everybody. I mean, people, grandparents now raising their grandchildren. Awfully good book. Find it downstairs in the Upton Library, and also, it's in Amazon, yeah. correct? Yeah. And also, let me give you his email address. Uh, is it O O or zero zero? O O. No, it's O O. O O. O O A K A M S at yahoo dot com. Wolcams at yahoo.com if you have any questions about it. Um, also, if people would like to have you come speak somewhere, are you open to that? Yeah, okay, sure. Book signings? Sure. Sure. Have you sure. ever been up to Tatnuck in Westboro? No. We gotta get you out here, man. There's so many opportunities. People love <clears throat> this type of thing. Um, that this yeah, actually, we'll be, we'll be very happy to do it uh, because the, the major aim of this book, as a matter of fact, is yeah. to let people know that it's possible it's possible for grandparents yeah. to actively step in. Definitely. To step in and maybe redeem a, a situation uh, whereby it's not that people shouldn't send their children to um, daycare. Uh, daycare. Yeah. But where they can, when they, can. they should exploit. Because. Yeah. Uh, you think this is going to happen? I personally, I found it big joy and I believe that that joy can be you shared. You went by through others. this then. <laughs> I went uh, through ha, ha, I got it now. <laughs> All right. No wonder this is so good. You guys went through it yourselves. <laughs> you kept that secret to the very end. Oh, okay. So this is basically just a memoir. Yeah, it's actually like I said, it's based on a true story. I I didn't I didn't want to say that it was based on my it's fine. my on my oh, experience. No. People love they love to know that. They likely do. <laughs> We've just gotta wind it up here. Again, um, Dr. Oliver Nakam and he's back after geez, gosh, the last time we saw you was what four years ago? Four about, about four five years, years ago. Five years ago, yeah. And um, 
from physician to author, you were a physician in, in Nigeria, you studied in med school, you did your time, you did your 25 years, what you wanted to do, right? That, that's a year, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it, did it jump to 30 years, right? Yeah, I oh, wanted to stop at 25 years, but I ended up being 30. 30 years. An yes. anesthesiologist, a sleepy doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then you moved to the States with your wife. And you said, nope, I'm going to be an author now. <laughs> and that's exactly what you did. Do you miss it? Do you, go, do you get over there to visit the family much, over to Nigeria? Oh, yeah. yeah, we do. You go. We do. You do. You we like do. to fly. Uh, yeah, oh. we do quite a, like, uh, we do quite a lot of traveling. Um, like, some two of my books have been, uh, have been republished in uh, London, in the UK. Yeah. And uh, occasionally we go to uh, promote the, the yeah. books. That's what you're doing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Little Baby Lydia will be published in London yeah, in about another four months. Okay, so you have another book coming. Uh, He's looking yes, at me like... Hopefully in another six months. Okay, because you're going to take a little break. I mean, 20 books is a lot, Oliver. <laughs> That's an awful lot. And this, I love this now. Now I know it's based on a true story. It's based Your on very a true own. Story, yes. Grandparents taking care of their grandchildren. And as I said, all cultures got the baby boomers, the people who are older than the baby boomers, Gen Xers watching their grandchildren. Um, my son's two children are with the maternal side uh, grandparents right now, but they come visit me. Okay. And uh, they're up there in years. I mean, they're ahead of me, and they're up there, and they're coping. I don't know how, <laughs> but there's a two very active children. It's. What, did you find that hard, the active part of it? Uh, initially, initially, it, it it wasn't easy. It was uh, no. you know, having to wake up at night. Sometimes the baby would be crying. Yeah, you wouldn't know what. Well, even even as the uh, with the pediatrics, as a doctor, you would yeah, yeah, even with the pediatrics you did in, in the medical school, you wouldn't be sure yeah. you know, whether it was colic, whether it was a yeah. a physical problem, or whether it was wetness or yeah. You know, but with time, as they grow up, in fact, you enjoy them more. Yeah, that's what me By too. the time they start getting to one year. When he could talk, I was doing much exactly. better. But when he could tell exactly. me what he felt, my, his father preferred it. He wanted him to stay a baby. I'm like, oh, no. I, mm -hmm. I want him to. I want to be able to communicate with him. Did you and your wife take turns on the night shift? Yeah. Oh. That was the only way. <laughs> it was. Oh, oh, that was the worst. That was the worst part. I mean, oh, no. Till we finally figured out that little guy was hungry. Doctors say, oh, no, 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 he's only a few months old. You can't feed him food. The mothers told me, Jan, the kid's hungry. Put a little bit of the cereal into his formula. Yes. And do you know, just like I am, he can't what? sleep on, without what? food. <laughs> so yeah. he had to, uh, he was to, hungry. Yeah, I need to keep him longer. He was hungry. <laughs> Very, thank you, Oliver. Yeah, thank you so keep much. Keep in yeah. touch, okay? <laughs> thank you keep so much. Keep in touch. Thank you, Jan. We'll see you next time. It'll be my yeah. guest. Thank you. Bye-bye.